Hello guys, Alvaro here for Antagma and today I want to show you how to create this kind of effect. So, in order to achieve this, we'll first do a 2D smoke simulation using Pyro. And then we will use this smoke simulation to drive some particles and to get a more interesting look instead of standard particles, we will just use pop fluids and then it gets like this kind of cool shape and then we will use the smoke density to color these particles and we can choose the gradient we want so it always end up looking pretty interesting okay so let's start by adding a geometry sop here and I'll call it particles I'll dive inside and let's get the trace node to get our logo actually not my logo let's get the antagma logo and as you can see here, it doesn't have to be like PNG or something, like a JPEG works just fine. And I will delete everything that I don't want, like the name and the background. And let's scale it up to something bigger, because I know that my fluid simulation that I want to do works better if this thing is bigger, because I tested earlier. Okay, so just to be a bit clear, it's important for you to do something, put your object on this scale this logo here it have like four meters by four meters so if you do something like way bigger the simulation will look different and if you do something like way smaller it may not even work so try to stick on this size or something quite close to it so if you look on the front view you can see that it's not aligned so let's use this game dev tools here so this game axis align and make sure that everything is on center. So now the logo is aligned. I'll look through my camera now. And I wanna create a pyro simulation from the edges of it. So I will I'll get rid of this mesh and I will create just like uh, the lines because I will end up just needing the, the points at the end. So I'll use this end swap and use a row with shared points right now i have too many points here so i will use our sample and keep it something like 0 0.05 and what i need now is an attribute a velocity attribute pointing outside the logo and i found out that a nice way to do that is using a polyframe so this polyframe, I don't need this and this. I just need the byte tangent and I want it to be the velocity. So if you try to see the velocity here, sometimes you just can't for no reason. It's kind of buggy. So you just like enable it, disable the visualizer here. And right now you can see that the normals are pointing on the right direction already. If you by any chance need it to point inside, you can just reverse the normals doing like a at n multiply it by minus one semicolon and then it will point inside I don't really need this so I will disable and I'll create a null here and call it out points let's go to the pyro simulation now so I want to create some volumes and I know that I need a density a temperature and a velocity so right now I have this point velocity and Houdini now have this pyro source node and if you if you initialize it as a source of smoke it will create the attributes you need so it creates density and temperature it's, it just creates the attributes just the same thing as use an attribute create but kind of like a shortcut so now i have a point attribute called density uh, temperature and a velocity now i want to rasterize those attributes to make them a volume so rasterize from attributes and then i can fit this into dots so the volumes I want to rasterize are the density, the attributes I want to rasterize actually, the temperature, I'm not sure if I will use this temperature and the velocity, but I'll keep it here anyway. And I also like to normalize this clamped value so it looks a little bit better. So now I do have the, the volumes I need. So let's create a null here and call it volume source. And let's connect it to a DOP network. And I'll call this DOP network smoke, whatever. Now inside the DOP network, let's create 
the things I need for the smoke simulation. So I know that I need a smoke object. I need a smoke solver. And to get stuff from outside, from SOPS, I need a volume source. So let's connect the smoke solver, the smoke object here, the smoke source here, and the smoke solver on the output. So this grid here is where the smoke simulation will happen. So I need it to be bigger. So I'll just select the smoke object here, press enter on the viewport, or select this tool here. And with shift, holding shift, I will scale it like this. And now on the volume source, I need to specify this as first context geometry. So it will get my stuff because it's connected here on the first input. And this is kind of annoying that this says that it is initializing as a source smoke, but it's actually not. So what I want to do is like just change to something else and go back to source smoke. And now it's initializing the density, the temperature and the velocity like I need. Let's simulate it and see how it goes. So it's looking nice, but the resolution is super low. So let's get this division size here, copy it and go back to SOPS and pass it here on the volume rasterize attribute. You have the voxel size. So it keeps the same thing here and there. And let's increase this resolution to something that looks a bit nicer. So it looks cool. I'll get rid of this temperature. Not sure if I'm gonna use it, so I'll just keep it on zero instead of deleting it. And cool, the velocity is working but it's not looking really nice. So something that I found out is that if we make a two-dimensional grid from that, it gets some really nice curves and it's way faster, you know? So it's kind of hard to see here because the density is too high. So on this smoke object, you can see that we are visualizing the density here. So just go to the density tab and decrease this value like a lot. So you can see that we have some really nice curves here. And this, keep in mind that this doesn't change anything in your simulation. It's just like a visualization thing. So cool. It's working, but it's losing the shape of the logo. So let's add the logo as a collider here. So it keeps the N at the ends at the center always. So in order to do that, I'll go up one level. And from those points here, I will use a polycap to create a mesh from it and a poly extrude. So if you look on the side view here, you can see that it's extruding in this direction. And if you look like on the really side right view here, you'll see that. So I have the orange origin here and it's extruding this way. Like, and I would like to keep this logo always on the center. So it extrudes on both ways. So let's use that game dev align thing again and keep, so I want to, I, I want to work just on the Z direction. So I'll, I won't change this and this, but keep the Z on center. So now it's doing it the way I want. And don't forget to output it back. Like I used to forget it all the time. Now I got used to it and let's keep like a high value here. I know that the simulation here is flat, but later on the particles, it may be better like this. So now this is fine. Let's create a new, let's call it collision source. And let's add a collision source here. So this collision source, it will create a surface collision let's call it surface and on this side it creates a volume collision so let's call it vdb now i will create a quick mark here pressing ctrl 2 go inside here and create this static object static object and something funny is that you don't really need this static solver here to make it work. So let's just like do it like this and connect it to the output. And this static solver, it needs the surface collider here. So I will go back here, control C on the surface node, go back there and 
press Ctrl V here. And I'll create like another quick mark here, pressing Ctrl, Ctrl 3. Go to the collisions and let's see the volume we have. This is being generated automatically by Houdini. Uh, I don't really want this. I want to get what I have there outside in SOPS. So on mode, I'll get this volume sample and I have to specify the proxy volume here. So I'll just go back here inside, press 3 to go back inside and paste it, paste it here. Something else that I like to do is on this division method, I want to I wanna make it by size, copy this, go back here and paste this relative reference here. So it stays always like the same thing. And as you can see, like this volume, it's losing a lot of details in this corner. So let's increase the resolution on a way that it doesn't get like too high, but it keeps that. So I think this is fine like this. And make sure you disable this because simulation gets slower if this is on. And you know what? I'll keep this off also. And let's see how it's going on. So yeah, it looks cool. I'm getting some nice shapes, but it's too slow. So let's just go here and increase this velocity like a lot to 20. So it looks nice, but it's kind of too like noisy here, grainy. And something that we can do to fix this is increase the sub steps here. So I'll put like a minimum of two and a maximum of five. And I know that this will be important for the particle simulation later. So it looks cool, it's super fast. So let's increase this resolution here. And now something that I don't like is this shape here. So I'm getting some really nice curves all around, but on these straight areas, I'm mean, having this everything going on the same direction and it gets these weird lines. I don't really like it. And that's happening because here on this guy, we have the velocity pointing like all straight in the same direction. So let's add a slightly variation to this. So here, uh, let's create it here. So I will create a point velocity. And I want to keep this velocity. I don't want to compute it from the, from the formation. I want to keep what I have, but I want to add a curl noise here. So this is too much. Like I just need a tiny little bit just so it's not going all in the same direction. So maybe like this, it can work. Let's see. Yes, you know, we're getting something nicer. Maybe I will increase just a little bit more, you know, like eight. Well, looks cool. So now that we have this smoke simulation, let's use this to guide our particle simulation. So what I'm going to do now is bring this to this side. And from here, I want to create another resample because I know that this, this points distribution here will not be good for the particle simulation. So right now, let's keep it like, I don't know, like 0 0.05. Let's call create a null here and call it par, uh, point source. and connect this to a pop network. So let's dive inside the pop network and here I don't want to see this guide and I want to emit from all of those points, not like scatter or emit randomly. So I just get like here all points and now it's emitting from all points. Something that I forgot to specify on the volume source is a time to stop emitting. So let's go back there. And here on the smoke source, 
so it's emitting forever you know like and in the simulation will be nicer if it stops at some point so let's say like do dollar f smaller or equal to 10 so it will keep emitting for 10 frames and then it stops and let's get this value here and let's do the same on the birth of the pop network so it keeps emitting as long as it's emitting smoke and right now like i don't wanna um, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want to keep this velocity here so on attributes I'll just zero this out it doesn't mean that it's not creating velocity it's not creating more particles it's just like creating particles one on top of the other one on top of another so you can see that on first frame you have 490 and on second frame you have more so it's creating particles over time it's just not moving because I wanna what I, how I wanna move these particles is using the volume so let's add a volume Adve pop advect by volumes here and here I want to specify that volume to do that I just have to go here and use a dop import fields I want to import it from this guy so just put this guy on the dop network and I want to get from this node here so I'll copy its name and paste it here now you also have to specify which fields you want to import so on smoke i will get i want the density i want the velocity but i don't want to rest i don't want the temperature not even the cd so this way you just keep like the things we need and you can see that it's there so let's create a node here and say call it like smoke sim i'll bring it to this other side here and connect it to the second input and now here on this guy I can just say that get the stuff from second input and see it's moving but this is not exactly what I want what I want here is update this well that's exactly what I want actually just just want to change some parameters here so instead of keep this air resistance to one I'll put like a super high value here right now you can see a lot of difference so let's increase this min and max sub steps and it's starting to look cool the only thing that bothers me is that like the particles are kind of jittered we'll use the pop fluid to keep like a nice distance between them and something else is that it just snaps here on frame 10 when it stops emitting so it goes from this nice silhouette to pa, nothing and two ways to fix this is well one way to fix this is I will create a control for here quick mark and I'll go back to the smoke simulation and I will, I will decrease this value here from 20 so let's just disable the simulation for now and I'll go to frame 5 and I'll create a keyframe here and then on frame 10 I will make it 0 so it decreases the velocity here it won't look like very different here but it will definitely help me out on the on the particle simulation so let's go back here and see it doesn't snap anymore at the end and okay it's looking nice and now let's add that pop fluid thing so I'll add a pop fluid here and I want to connect it this way and now let's see how it goes so this particle separation here is too high it's trying to keep a nice particle separation like based on these values so let's decrease this value to i know that 0 0.03 will work nice on this situation and something that i like to do here also 
is link this value here to this no so one nice thing about Houdini is that when it crashes you have this temp folder here and you have the let's see this is the latest one so just save it so I will go back to my folder there and let's call it 04 and keep it from where I was uh, okay so what I was trying to do is getting this guy here I'll copy this parameter and go to resample and paste it here so it keeps that particle separation it will initialize with the proper particle separation between the points here as well let's see how it goes now so it's looking all right like maybe this is too much let's decrease it a bit this like keep in mind that if you put like more sub steps here it not only gets slower but it creates more particles like every frame it will create a lot of particles so i'll keep this for four in four and four now because i tested earlier and i know it will work on my scene and it's not looking that nice because i want to increase this constraint stiffness constraint stiffness by like a lot like 100. now check it out i'm getting some really nice fluid look but something else that I know it's happening is if you look on this side here you see that the particles are not uh, on zero position in X so it's kind of hard to be influenced by the smoke that it's only like really flat there so what I can do here is add a pop wrangle and make sure that the Z position, so at P point Z, is always zero. And this will create a very different result, but it looks really nice in my opinion. So first thing I wanna do is add the collider here as well. Let's go to the smoke simulation, just get this guy here. And I will also copy this value here. I'll go back to the particle simulation paste this guy here and paste it as a relative reference to the other one so it all it always keeps the same uh, resolution i'll select both nodes holding out i will drag and release to create a merge node and connect it to the output let's see how it goes now so it looks it's looking interesting but the colors are super boring so something we can do here is color it based on some other attribute so here on the pop network right now it's getting the collider as well so let's just get the particles not the collider so on the object i'll type pop star so it will get everything that is called pop something inside In this situation is get it's getting only the pop, pop object but if you had more solvers here it would get like all of them so it's really nice to use it like this and now i have this so let's create a node let's call it pop scene and let's color it using the density of this volume because why not it looks nice so we don't have a density attribute here so let's use this volume attribute from volume and connect it here so i want to get the density attribute and i want to remap it as cd so right now it doesn't look interesting at all but you have this mapping tab that you can specify like my map volume vector and then we can put some really nice colors here like let's put some random stuff like from orange to this pinkish and it's looking nice you can increase this range here and you know what let's put like more colors here in between so bluish this guy and like a purplish thing here and then you can just like play with these values 
like what I like to, to make sure is that I have this last color. So this is where the density is zero. Here I, we probably have no density at all. Like if you have a look here in the, the volume, you'll see that we don't have density on this area. That's why it's yellowish. And where it's more dense, it's this pink here. So let's just try to keep a little bit of the pink so we know we're going all the way through the range and simulate it. So this is really nice already, but there's just like a, something else that I want to add. Let's just pin this here. And if you have a look, like as soon as it starts emitting it, the particles already have like all the velocity from the grid, from the, from the volume. So it's creating these lines here in between. So what I would like to do is like, if the particle have a really low age, it will not be influenced by this volume. And it's really simple to do that. So here uh, on the pop advect by volumes, you have this remap force. This remap force needs a expression. So if you go here to the expression and go to the pass through, you'll see that it have this force ramp. So what I can do here is use this force ramp as an age. And now we can remap this age here. Like if it's really low, like zero, the force that it's getting here, it will be zero also. But this age, it's going like one, two, three, four seconds. So let's just clamp it. So it goes just from zero to one. So I wanna clamp this, this age to go from zero to one. Now I know that in one, the influence will be 100% and on zero, the influence will be zero. So check this out. This get rid of those. So now when the particle is born, it have no influence at all from the from the volume, but it increasingly over time gets 100% influenced. And what we can do is like even like, let's make some nicer curves here, select both of them, do a Catman room. And then instead of going from one zero to one, let's make it like closer to like just a couple of frames and then it's 100% of influence. And now just something else that I like to do here on the pop object. I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff. We don't want it to collide. We don't want it to have friction. We don't want anything. I'm not sure how much that influences, but it just doesn't make sense to keep trying to do that on the simulation. And okay, so it's looking nice, but it's kind of losing a lot of the shape of the end. So something that I can do here on the smoke simulation, let's dive inside here, is try to add more detail. So I'll pin it here. And on this volume rasterize attributes, I will decrease this particle scale to five. What it does is like, it's kind of, not sure if we can see it here. So check it out, like it was like bigger. So let's make it smaller and let's see how it goes now. So instead of going inside, let's just see it from here. So now it's getting nice, like way more details and it's keeping the shape better. So let's see how it goes to the particles. So it keeps better the shape, but I'm not sure if I like it. Let's try something in between maybe. It looks like that this particle scale on 0 0.9 gets, um, it keeps the shape of the logo and it also gets some really nice swirls around it here. And just one more thing that you could do is here on the pop network, you could make it 
these these uh, puppet vet by, by volume it influences the particles over time but then at some point on 25 here it just stops influencing it so we can do it like this and let's see how it goes and let's see with the colors and now here on 25 it should stop influencing it actually on 35 because like there was some particles being emitted by frame 10 and then the logo starts losing its shape can be good for I don't know some other situation so yeah it was an honor to record this tutorial for Antagma I hope you enjoy it and yeah bye